Hey AC family, my name is Pastor Akil Thompson for those that don't know and I am so glad to have you join us today for our online worship experience. We believe, no, 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 we know that we are the perfect church for imperfect people. And again, I'm so glad that you're here. I would like to personally invite you to join Sarah and I immediately after our online worship experience to get to know one another. Not only to get to know one another and connect, but to have an opportunity to pursue Jesus Christ together. Join us in our pastor's meet and greet Zoom call. It's a wonderful time of connection. In addition to that, take two minutes maybe not even two minutes, to complete our online connection card at extraordinarychurch.ca slash guest. We want to connect with you and we want to show you the extraordinary life that Jesus died for all of us to have. We are going to have an amazing time today and we have a lot of exciting things happening. I just want to tell you one more important thing before this online worship experience kicks off. You need to make sure that you are following us on every social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Why? Why is that important? Because not only are our online worship experiences there, but you can also find devotions and you can find worship songs. All of this is there. And in addition to that, here's the icing on the cake. We have our own app, podcast, the Bible, sermon notes. You're, it's a great way to strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you're with us. Jesus Christ is going to do amazing things. Wait, extraordinary things today. God bless you, and we're going to have a great time in Jesus. Hey, EC family. It's Ryan with your announcements for this week. 
Starting things off is Monday is family night. So get together with your mother, father, sister, brother, your dog, and do something fun. Go ride a bike, play a board game, but do it with family. Next up, we got our midweek Bible connections on Wednesdays. As usual, they're Zooming. So we'll see you online. Check us out on Zoom, YouTube, or Facebook. Then on Saturdays, we've got our youth Zoom with our middle school and high school students starting at 7.30 on Saturday. So look forward to seeing you guys there. Then finally, Sundays for our Sunday worship experience. We're celebrating fathers this week because it's Father's Day. So we look forward to seeing you on Sunday and have a great week. Hey, EC fam. Thank you for joining us today for service. And I want to talk to you about generosity. Generosity, it's key. It's one of our core competencies in our church. We are a generous church. We are a generous people. And the Bible talks about generosity all the time. It is more blessed to give than to receive. God didn't bless you so you can hold to all the resources, but He blessed you so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. And we want to talk to you about this because this is key to who you are in, as a follower of Christ or even as a person in this world. There are people in need. There are things that we're doing in our community to run the services, to, to have everything prepared and ready for you every Sunday. So we want to invite you to be generous with your time, with your resources, with your finances, and with everything, with your life. And so there's a couple of ways you can give. You can use the church website uh, at extraordinarychurch.ca you can also give text to give or interact a transfer or you can use the church app. If you don't have the church app, you must get it. It's not only a way to give, but there's a way to be involved in the church and be updated with everything that's going on. So there are multiple ways you can give. And at Extraordinary Church, we believe in biblical prayers, prayers that are important, prayers that are rooted in the Word of God. So I want to invite you to just close your eyes, or follow on the screen if you don't know the prayer and pray with us and believe into what God is doing in our lives. The prayer says is this, Upon the authority of your word I have given and it shall be given to me. Press down, shake it together and run it over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, states and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. I declare, you have to declare this over your life, I declare that my whole family is safe and walking with God. I declare divine health and favor, abundance and blessing. I'm blessed coming and going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus name. We love you and thank you for being a generous church. Let's worship God today.
up in this place, Lord God. Lord God, we fall on our knees, God, and on surrender of you, Jesus, God. More of you, God, is what we need, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God, yes, Jesus. Come in this place, God. God, sweep me away, God. We love you, Lord.
Praise God, His presence is here. And I'm so thankful for what I feel. In just a few moments, we're gonna be hearing from a very good friend of mine, Pastor Calvin Shaw from Stittsville, right outside of Ottawa, Ontario. He is no stranger to EC. As a matter of fact, he's not only a great friend to the Thompsons, but he's a great friend to EC. I want you to open up your hearts and reach out in faith and give Pastor Calvin Shaw an extraordinary church welcome as he comes to preach the word of the Lord. God bless everybody. Why don't you just continue to praise God right now with the worship team. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We feel your presence here right now. Do you feel him right in your room? Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord and just worship him for who he is, for he is God and God alone, and we love him and adore him. It is so awesome to be in the house of the Lord. Why don't you just say amen in the comments if you feel good to be in the house of the Lord. You see, the house of the Lord is not just a physical building, but it's a place where you reside with God. And I know in your homes right now or wherever you are, you can feel the presence of Almighty God. It is so good to be with the EC family. Thank you, Pastor Akil and Sister Sarah for inviting me once again to be with my second home. Can I say that on camera? My second home. And it's my family greets you in Jesus name. We're going to go right into the word of God today. I feel I have a word for your church, a word for this season in your life. And if you have your Bibles, uh, I want you to go to Mark chapter four, verses 35 to 41. Mark chapter four, verses 35 to 41. On the same day, when the evening had come, he, referring to Jesus, said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him in the boat as he was and the other boats that were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so it that it was already filling but he was in the stern picture this asleep on a pillow how did that pillow get in there in the first place and they awoke him and said teacher you do not care that we are perishing verse 39 and then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and said peace be still and instantly the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He then turned to his disciples and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, who can this be that even the winds and the waves obey him? Today, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach to you from this subject title. Don't forget your pillow. In the midst of a storm, you can still find rest. Do not forget the pillow. There is a percentage of people in the world that love and enjoy a great thunderstorm. If that's you, why don't you put some likes in the comment? Do you love a thunderstorm? I know my wife truly loves thunderstorms and it must be the boom of the thunder, the crash of the lightning, the sound of the consistent heavy rain slapping the earth and all the objects in its path. I did some research and some psychologists argue that because the brain craves so much sensory input that the sound of a, the thunderstorm when you're sleeping helps you uh, come to more calm. Is anybody like that out there, that you love the thunderstorm at night because you can go to sleep? Well, psychologically, what it does is it helps you put all the other things that you're thinking about out of range and you can hear the chaos of the storm. And in fact, I uh, at the time looked up some uh, I wanted to. I practiced this myself, so I went to YouTube and I said, thunderstorm, only expecting to uh, maybe get a five-minute thunderstorm. And, and I saw clips of one hour, five hour, even ten hours on YouTube of thunderstorms, realizing that people really use this thunder to 
to get some rest. If you search a little bit deeper, there's something that's called thunder therapy. It helps uh, sleep during the times of crisis. For the sleep deprived, finding a reliable sleep aid can be a lifelong struggle. Maybe some people are getting those sounds of the ocean or the sounds of the birds, but this is an actual theory that if you use the thunder, it is a technique that is consistently used to lull us to sleep. When you hear that thunder therapy, the process of falling asleep to the rolling sounds and the rolling thunder is thunder is the newest wellness trend to help for our sleep. You may think that could be frustrating or exhausting for, for some, but it truly works because there is something in the storm that if you have, you can find comfort in a storm. That seems unreasonable. Making the application for today, we have seen, if you like I in 2020, we have lived through some storms this year. Maybe not even on the big picture, but I know there has been storms of sickness, storms of oppression, storms of pressures. People have been losing their jobs. Uh, there's storms of difficulties in relationships. There's dif disappointments. There's even bereavement. There's persecution. There are storms that have seemed to have filled our lives this year. But it helps me realize that even in the midst of our storms, we have a man named Jesus that can be a comfort to us. Can I tell somebody this morning that in the midst of a storm, there can still be found great peace. But it brings me to the tension in this text this morning, or even to a question is it possible to truly find peace in the middle of a storm? Can we find rest where there seems to be no rest? Is it possible to get some peace in our lives, even just a little bit in the middle of the storm? Sometimes we think peace comes after the storm, but can we have peace in the midst of the storm? The scripture that I read this morning started with Jesus. And to give you a little bit of context, why don't you walk with me around the text a little bit? Jesus is with his disciples. He's uh, on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. Crowds have been following him in great anticipation and in awe of his ministry, the miracles, the sermons, and the teaching. So much so that everywhere he goes, people are flocking him. People are coming to him. People are uh, just pushing their way to get a little glimpse and a little clip of Jesus. In the midst of all this, he has been spending time teaching through what we know as the parables. They are short stories to help us understand a point, some moral point, some, uh, uh, I would say, even Christian point or religious point at that time to be a little bit more accurate. And Jesus has been teaching many stories to help people understand that there is something about the words that he has for them. In the midst of that, you'll notice, and I'm giving you a little bit of context to the scripture, the disciples oftentimes after a parable begin to ask Jesus because they have been walking with him this whole time, asking, what does this parable mean? Give us some insight. And Jesus always gives them the answer. But you will notice there was one time that they asked Jesus, uh, why are you teaching in parables? And he says, I'm teaching in parable because it separates those that really want to know who I am and those that just want a nice story. Can I tell somebody this morning that our relationship with God cannot just be relied on the nice little stories, our relationship with God? In fact, we've even seen it in this day. We can't be in a building. We can't show up at a service anymore more like we've, we've done before, but our relationship is not just based on little things, antidotes, uh, and things that our pastor has been telling us, but it really boils down to relationship. You see the disciples, they didn't just hear the stories, but they walked with Jesus everywhere he went. Uh, if he was on the Sea of Galilee, they were there. If he was in the mountaintops, they were there. They knew that as long as they were standing beside him, everything was going to be all right. Can I tell somebody this morning 
that our relationship with God in this hour is going to depend on us getting a little bit closer to him. I can't just hear a little Bible verse and I can't just hear a little Bible story, but I got to get closer to Jesus every single day. And if I get closer to him, he will make a difference in our lives. Verse 35 says, on the same day, Jesus says to them, let us cross over unto the other side. Not trying to get ahead of myself this morning, but I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Somebody needs to know that when Jesus gives you a word, you need to stand on that word. Why don't you clap your hands uh, in anticipation of what I'm about to say. When Jesus promises you something, you no matter what is going on around you, you need to just stick to what he says. If Jesus tells you something, I'll use my Jamaican roots. Everything is going to be all right. Somebody, can you hear me this morning in your home? If Jesus gives you a promise, he will also supply the provision to meet the promise. But we know the storms of life will come. In fact, I don't have to be a prophet to predict that the storms of life have already come into your home this morning. Maybe it's on a personal level or on a national level, but we are living in unprecedented times. We are living in a storm-filled world. In fact, I I look at 2020 and I I think to myself, uh, why has there been so much storms? I'm coming to realize that it's in the storm that we find the greatest peace. The Bible says in verse 37 that there was a great windstorm that arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filled. Now, I want you to get a picture of what's actually happening here. The the disciples jump into a boat. Understand this. There are few of the disciples that are actual fishermen. So they understand that the the waves, the wind, they understand the actual sea that they're on. In fact, if you do a little bit of a study, the Sea of Galilee is a a big body of water, about 680 feet. And they would have known that it's in between two hills and two mountains. So Peter and some of the other fishermen would have been on that uh, uh, lake or that sea many times. They would have known the waves. They would have even known that that place was liable to have storms because of the mountain. So the storm really wasn't supposed to scare them the way that it did. That's why the Bible said it was a great windstorm, meaning that something arose that they were not prepared for. You see, in this hour, sometimes we think we're prepared for life storms. Sometimes we believe that it's our intellect that will help us through our storm or our money that can help us through the storm. Sometimes we think it's our connections or or our influence or, or how we carry or conduct ourselves. But there are some storms that you, even with your skills, even with your experience, even with all the things that you have at your disposal, there are some storms that we cannot manage so the Bible says that when this storm hits them they realize that even though they are great fishers even though they've handled storms in the past this one was too large so what they do in verse 38 they are in the boat and they are navigating everything and their navigation seems to uh, be disrupted. So they, the Bible says in verse 38 that they go down to Jesus to go speak to him. And, and I want you to get this mental picture. They go to the back of the boat and they look expecting Jesus to be like everybody else, scared out of his mind. But Jesus is laying down as if he's in a cruise ship. 
He has a big old pillow on the back of his head. He's probably lying down. I can picture him smiling and I can picture him just acting like the waves that are beating in as a refreshing breeze. And they are confused with what's actually happening. They see Jesus. How can you sleep in the middle of the storm? They awake him, the Bible says, and they say, teacher, don't you care? that we're perishing? Can I stop there? I know some of us have even prayed and said, with all the things that are happening in our society right now, Jesus, don't you care that I'm feeling the stress that I have? Jesus, don't you care that I have the pressures of life on me? And Jesus wakes up and guess what? He doesn't even respond to them. That's so interesting. Sometimes we we pray, God, give me a word. God, speak to my heart. God, if you just say something to me, then everything will be all right. But I want you to understand that we got to get to a place right now in the Holy Ghost that it's not just Jesus speaking to us. We need to direct Jesus to the storm. The Bible says that he passes them. He doesn't say a word to them. Verse 39, it says that he arises and he looks to the wind and he rebukes the wind and says, peace be still. Oh, somebody needs to get that in the Holy Ghost this morning. Jesus, you don't just got to speak to me, but speak to my situation. Speak to my illness. Speak to my anxiety. Speak to my stress. Even if you don't give me a word, just speak to the thing that is troubling me. Somebody has to understand that Jesus can bypass you sometimes and speak to your dilemma. He can speak and things will be calmed. I understand this further. If you remember the story, the devil sends himself and his angels to go and steal the body of Moses. Somebody remember this story? Moses has died and he is buried in a place that uh, only God knew. And uh, uh, the devil goes and tries to steal his body. You know why he tries to steal the body of Moses? Because Moses represents the word. Moses represents the law. Can I tell you in this hour, in this very moment, you got to protect the word that God has given you. If God has given you a word for this hour, do not let the devil take it from you. God sends his archangels. Michael shows up. And Michael, what he does is so interesting. He doesn't begin to fight the devil. He doesn't go after Satan. What he says is so critical. He says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You understand what's going on. He says, God, you don't have to give me a word, but I'm going to send the word to my trouble. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Oh, who needs to hear that word this morning? Life, all the things that are happening in our lives this day, the Lord rebuke you. God will bring peace to our storm if we just call out to him. So Jesus speaks. In fact, uh, I I, want to take a little bit of time on this. If you study out how Jesus is speaking, he says, peace be still. And it's not just a simple little statement there. You got to understand that when Jesus said that, there was a girth in his voice. Study it out in the Greek. I've studied it out. And there was something behind what he was saying. The bi- Some of the commentary says it almost seemed like Jesus was rebuking an evil spirit. It was the same tone as rebuking a spirit. And the second Jesus speaks and rebukes the storm, immediately it goes quiet. Somebody needs to know that you know the master 
of the storm. I don't know if you know it. This is an old school Pentecostal apostolic song, but we used to sing it. I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm and make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Instantly, Jesus speaks and rebukes the storm and it goes quiet. And they realize in that moment who really is in the boat with them. I know they've been walking with Jesus for quite some time. They have been uh, listening and hearing and building a relationship with him. But it's in that moment that they say there is something different. You know, a storm will bring a different side of Jesus to your mind. A storm, it is only a storm that will give you a better perspective of who we are serving this man named Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Verse 40, the Bible says that he then turns to them. After speaking to the storm, he then gives us a word. He says, do you not have any faith? Why were you so scared? Do you not know who is in the boat with you? Immediately they, with fear and almost excitement in their voice, verse 41, they say, who can this be that even the wind and the waves or the sea obey him? I've come to remind you this morning that we need a fresh revelation of who Jesus is. I know we've been at home for quite some time. I know we haven't experienced all the things that we've been accustomed to. But can I tell you, if you get a little glimpse of Jesus right now, even in your home, you will feel and see him differently. You will understand that regardless of what has been happening in our lives personally and also nationally, he is still with me. I can trust him with all of my heart because I understand that fear and faith can never walk together. And when I'm walking with faith, fear must leave. We need to remember that Jesus is in our boat today. Jesus is is in our home today. We can get some rest knowing that it's Jesus that was walking with us before the storm and it's Jesus that is going to bring us through the storm. In fact, he's the one that said, we are already going to get to the other side. You need to hear me this morning. I want to make a declaration in the Holy Ghost. We will get through this and not just come out of this just okay, but we will get out of this even better. Wherever you are, just know in the Holy Ghost that God is preparing you to get a little bit better to get out of this because he has promised us that we will get to the other side. So I'll say to you this morning, if you need some rest, don't forget your pillow. Do not forget the pillow that God has provided. You need to walk onto your boat in the storm with an assurance, uh, that blessed assurance uh, that in the midst of the storm, I can lay down and rest in the Holy Ghost. I want to bring you back to something. You say, Pastor Calvin, why or how is it possible that you can say, that you can sit in the back and sleep in a storm. You see, sometimes we act like the disciples. Sometimes we act like the fishermen. We try to be at the front of a matter. We try to be at a front of the situation saying, I'm navigating my way through the Sea of Galilee. I'm navigating my way through the storm. I already been here before. I've seen things like this before. I can get through it. But understand, Jesus is not only uh, sometimes not just in the front of the matter, but he is at the back of a matter. Oh, you need to hear me. 
Jesus doesn't only see what's going in before, but he's seeing what's going coming out after. He is in the back of the boat saying, I know the beginning and the end. In fact, Revelation tells us uh, that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Why is this important? You know why? Because Jesus knew that he could not die in that situation. You say, Pastor Calvin, how how do you know that he couldn't die? Because he had a word representing in the pillow. He knew that he came to die on a cross. So there is no way that he would die in that boat. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. When Jesus steps and gives you a word, he sees the front of the thing and also the back of a thing. And he knows that we're going to get out of this. So don't forget your pillow. Ha! You know what's interesting, and this is the last thing that I'll tell you. If you study out further along in the scriptures that we talked about, on the other side of the storm was a man locked in chains on an island. Oh, you need to hear me this morning. There was a man possessed by devils. You know the story. Jesus leaves this situation, goes to that situation, and the man leaves the empty tombs and runs to Jesus. And he is freed from the devil in that very moment when he gets to Jesus. It tells me that when Jesus was rebuking the storm, he was rebuking the enemy that was on the other side where there was somebody locked up and in bondage. Can I tell you that when we get on the other side of our storm, there are people that need to be encountered with the Jesus inside of you because when they see you coming, they will feel the refreshing power of the Holy Ghost. You have something with you that if you can just stick it out through the storm, there is revival on the other side of this storm. EC family, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Fight through this storm and understand that if you have the word which represents the pillow, that you can rest in the midst of the storm. And when you get out of this, There are going to be souls in Mississauga that come out of nowhere. There's going to be people that were watching online that you had no clue who they were, but they said, you've got through this and you've had Jesus Christ with you. Can I have him too? And guess what? Not even the devil can stop them from reaching what you have. So as I come to a close this morning, I want you to know that no matter what winds may blow and storms may come, no matter how grand this thunder and lightning may be, do not forget that you have the word of God, the pillow that you can rest on. You have Jesus Christ that in the midst of your storm, you can lay on him and say, Jesus, even in your Caribbean voice, everything is going to be all right because you told me it is true. Why don't right now in your room, wherever you are, why don't you begin to lift your hands to Jesus? And why don't you begin to speak in a heavenly language? Some of you begin to speak out in the name of Jesus. No matter where we have been, no matter where we are going, it really doesn't matter as long as we have Jesus with us. And I can rest assured that when I have him, I can have the rest of the Holy Ghost. God bless you, EC family. Make sure that at the end of the service, you can connect with your EC family brothers and sisters. Stay around for a little while. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Hey, EC fam, we're so thankful that you've joined us today. God's presence, it's in your room, in your house, in your kitchen. God's presence, it's so powerful and so present 
at this moment right where you're at. So I want to invite you to lift your hands up to heaven and raise your voice and start to glorify Him and praise Him. Because when you do that, you're opening the floodgates of heaven for His presence to come and take over absolutely everything in your room, in your presence. Because God's presence is overshadowing absolutely everything. But you have to, you have to cling into it. Don't let God's presence to come and leave and leave you just like you were, but to transform you and change you. And if you're feeling God's presence, I want to invite you to go into our Zoom call right after I'm done speaking. The description of the Zoom call is going to be popping up here on the screen. It's going to be popping up in the comments. But we want to get together with you, whether you have a problem, you're doing great, or you just want to talk or have a conversation. We're here to hear you out and here to do life with you. So come to the Zoom call. Our ministry team is eager to speak with you and have fun with you and pray with you and agree with what God's doing in your life. Today is the day that you can experience extraordinary. So don't wait and sit around, but do something about it and get into the Zoom call. We're waiting for you. We're waiting to connect with you. We love you and we believe the best for you. Extraordinary is here.